All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fret Job. This is where we talk about guitars, music, pretty much anything that's got strings on that makes a noise. And I want to introduce everybody to our host, Brandon Edwards. He is the master luthier at Frizzell Guitars and also the owner of Frizzell Guitars. So and I'm going to hand it over to here, Brandon. Our other wonderful host here, Jonathan McWhorter. Thank you. Hey, Bucky, welcome to the Fret Job. All right, so... Uh, Bear with us. Jonathan Recorder. I'm owner here at Brazil Guitars. Jonathan Recorder. He doesn't need, he is one talented son of a gun on any instrument he plays. He's a real estate guru. I mean, he's the, he's the man for all your real estate needs. So, I mean, he is, he is the, he is the guitar man, the musician. He's a great friend and uh, a great man. So, uh, so happy to be doing this with him. Well, thank you, Brandon. <clears throat> So, I'm happy to be here with you. Yeah, so uh, I'm happy on our first episode here. So we got a lot in store for you today, a lot of goodies. So first things first, I'm playing through this box, Valtronic AD50. And let me tell you, this could, this amp is for sale. Two hundred and fifteen dollars to take this amp home today. It's a multi effects amp. It is a big son of a gun. You can see it here in my video. Can you see? Yeah, you can see the amp, can't you, Jonathan? Yeah. Oh, I see it good, and I hear it good too. It sounds good, man. I'm not. I normally play through my normal, uh, my normal half stack here, but I'm playing through this with a 2021 Les Paul standard here. And uh, let me tell you, I am just tickled peachless for this first string we got going on here. And I want to grow with you. I want to hear you all 
hear your stuff, hear what you guys like. Those of you that are listening out on our radio station that can't see us live, uh, we appreciate you listening there on our online radio station. Uh, so, so that is uh, that is pretty cool. And um, I really uh, really appreciate that. So yeah, we're tell all, us where all are we? We're on we Facebook on Live, Instagram. and then and then we're not live on Instagram, just Facebook Live, and then we're also live on we're also live on Spreaker, Spreaker, which is an online radio station, and so we got an online cool. podcast okay. station there. People can listen to us one on one live and stuff, and they can hear us and uh, whatnot along those lines. So those of you that are out as here, far out let as us, we can. Let us know the audio. Yeah, so we're streaming worldwide to both platforms. The radio station is geared towards the people that are at work that can't watch, but they can listen. So maybe they're working on a vehicle, maybe they're at an office, and they can listen to it, but they can't watch it. So therefore, this is an opportunity for them to get the best of both worlds. So uh, we got one live studio studio audience in here. We got a <laughs> we got we got a. We got a we got a live studio audience, one person, but man, sure he's he's here rooting. So I'm uh, I'm excited. We want to hear your all's questions. We want to hear your all's thoughts. And let me tell you, I picked up this Vox AD50 VT, and I am impressed. It's got Vox AC30. It's got so many different Vox amps into one, and it sounds incredible. I mean, this is the amp right here that I would take on stage and play if if I didn't want to lug this big old half stack around. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Like, it's got a clean, and I know you're saying, I plugged it into this Johnson back behind me here. If you can see it, you may not be able to. And I mean, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a killer sound. And another thing, uh, everybody say hi to Clint Black behind me. As he, <laughs> as he's stealing my thunder. No. But, uh, <laughs> we've worked really hard. Me and Jonathan have worked really hard to get this podcast started this podcast going on this live uh, this live radio show live show and uh, we hope it turns out big let us know where you're watching from let us know where you are where you're watching from how the audio sounds how everything sounds to you all and let us know and another thing I'll demo here in a little bit I picked up this Digitech tone driver audio drive pedal the other day and it's it's also going to be for sale and it's a great sounding drive pedal. If you're looking for a drive pedal with different tones and levels and stuff, I mean, Digitech makes some great pedals. I've had I've had some great Digitech pedals over the uh, over the years, and I've been extremely happy with all of them that I've that I've had. So that's that's been a been a major plus to me is all the Digitech pedals. I've had some pretty good ones, and I mean, Digitech made some great multi effects pedals. Have you ever used any Digitech stuff before, Jonathan? I've never used any Digitech stuff. No, I have not. I'm, I'm kind of an acoustic guy. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So I mean, we'll have a little segment here to talk about some acoustic stuff. So yeah. Let's. I know that last fall sounds good through that box. I know that. Yeah, for sure. Definitely for sure. And you guys really need to go check out the shop. They call me Messy He's getting new. Here. I spill Getting stuff, new stuff in there every chance he does, can. Yeah, every chance I get, I try to get new stuff in the shop. So, I mean, you really want to see, you really want to see a killer uh, come in. So, a little bit about Frizzell guitars. I worked to get. I went to Luthier School in Nashville. I graduated Luthier School and I got a job at the Gibson Custom Shop. I worked there for a year and a half. And while I was working there, I just wanted to get some experience and whatnot. And I said, well, you know, I've got some experience. I want to go out and open my own guitar company. That's what I went to school for. I want to build a brand of guitars that people are going to love for the next 20 years. I want to be build a brand of guitars that are known as Fender, that are known as, as Gibson. 
Ibanez anything. I want a brand of guitars that people say, oh, hey, that's a Frizzell guitar. And, man, I want one of those. Did you play the new model? You know, stuff like that. I want to make a guitar that people are going to remember, that people are going to say, hey, that's a Frizzell guitar. That is a that is one one great playing guitar. I want to be able to look out on stage or look out on the TV and look up and somebody's playing a Frizzell guitar. You know, it means a lot to me. I want to bring a great class of guitar to the world of guitar, to, to the world of guitars. And I want to bring great repair and a great music store to Danville because we are Central Kentucky's premier guitar store, in my opinion. And Absolutely. premier luthier shop. And uh, so, so, so Jonathan asked me this. You're an acoustic man. What do you think about that new Gibson G series with the little sound hall on the side? You know, I I haven't played any of these guitars that have these side sound holes. Um, I've saw some that I liked, uh, but I've yet to play one of them with the side sound hole. I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I like the way they look. But if it makes it sound better, you know, I, I, I'm willing to try anything like that. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, they're supposed to be a USA made guitar. But it's supposed to, you know, be budget friendly yeah. as well with yeah. these new Gibson Generation X or whatever, which is yeah. which is pretty cool. So another question. I know, I know a lot of custom makers, and a lot of custom makers are are starting to do the side sound hole thing and and different. A lot of people are positions. trying to do different things, trying to get away from traditional Martinism, if you know what I mean when I say Martinism. Yeah. As a term yeah. I'm using here that I may have been used before, a typical Martinism is like. Uh, is basically being uh, using uh, making like a going away from the traditional Martin Gibson shapes sound front. People are just trying to come up with some bizarre stuff. So so. Uh, and if they hang out, if they hang out with the two of us much, they're going to realize that the individualism of musicians <laughs> is what they're going to realize because it's night and day between any two musicians what they you know what they like what they're after. So yeah, of course. I say that as it is now. It's different. What people like, you're, what people are gonna like, and what people you're want. Exactly right. Everybody's got their own taste out there. I'm not gonna like the same thing as Joe. I'm not gonna like the same thing as little Bobby with Skippy Lake. I'm not gonna like the same thing as Mike. <laughs> I'm not gonna like the same thing. Nobody is. You know, everybody has yeah. their own taste. What they like, what they want, what they played over the years. It's just a custom to them. You know. Yeah. The good thing about build. Good thing about building your, your own guitars and. And doing what you're doing is you've got a blank slate. You know what I you mean? You want to read Jaden's you've comment? Got, uh, I don't know if I can see her comment, actually, Brandon. It's a he. If not, I got it here. No. I was just seeing if you could see I don't, it. I'm not seeing any of the comments on here. Okay. You know, well, I'm just still on Jaden put Zoom myself coming from the world of classical guitar. I've seen it a lot. I can tell you from having played a lot of great handmade classical guitars, the side sound hole really helps you as a player to hear yourself. Wow. You know, I, I'd like to try one and and, uh, and see what she's talking about. I can see that, absolutely. So, you know, it may, it may be a thing yeah. that works out. So, so tell me this. What do you, uh, like, I'll tell you what. I want to rank my top five favorite acoustic guitars of all time. That's just my favorite. That I that I love. Let's do it. So I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with number one on my list is the Gibson J200. I love a good J200 with the sunburst, the abalone around it. Oh. Ro Me too. Sunburst. Yeah, I like any J200. Any any kind of J200 I like. Sunburst, rosewood. I like you know with the abalone. I like the natural with the flame. Any one of those are great options for me. Number two on my list is probably gonna have to be the hummingbird. I just love the hummingbird, the feel. I own a hummingbird. I just love the hummingbird, the look, the play, the feel of it. Number three and on my list, and you're gonna shock these or I'll give number three on my list is is probably is probably the J45. And the reason I say that is the J45 has been America's workhorse of a guitar for so long. It's iconic. A lot of my favorite musicians, Chris Young, people like that. Like Chris Young, people, people of that nature have played a J45, and to me, that's that's you will find a better playing acoustic 
that that's a workhorse in the J45, in my opinion. Absolutely. And Absolutely. so you got so that's my my four choices of Martin OM. I love a good OM. It's smaller body. And then number five on my list, which is going to be shocking, I like a good talk, a good talk of meaning. I like a good, oh, yeah. uh, I like a good, uh, I like a good Santa Fe, a good talk. The reason I say that is I grew up with, with, with a mentality from my father that, hey, I'm not going to go buy you these great guitars. You're going to work and earn a guitar and get a guitar, you know. And yeah. so one of my first guitars I got out there in the world of guitars was a Takamini. I got my, my decent acoustic, and I loved it. Even though it was a Chinese-made G-Series, I loved it. I mean, that thing yeah. played great, sounded great, had a great pickup in it. I played the crap out of the guitar. I mean, I really oh, put yeah. miles on that guitar. I There's been a lot much. of good music written on those. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about setup-wise and stuff then. I didn't know as much as I know now. Well, definitely as much as I know now, but, but I just knew it was a great sound of guitar. And I knew that it got me from point A to point B. And I knew that I played that thing. I played that thing at church. I played that thing on any stage they would let me play it on. I played that guitar. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, there's I, nothing I really, wrong with a G series. Yeah. And it's a nothing, great start. It's a great starter guitar or a great guitar for somebody that's not far along in their playing. You know, it's and it's great for to to play on later on in your playing career. I mean, they're they're decent yeah. guitars, man. I mean, you can see my hummingbird behind me here on the wall. It's a hummingbird pro. I love it. I mean, I mean. Then there's some other notable mention: Larry Big guitars, Eastman's. So you tell me. Go ahead. Uh, let me. Let me. Let, let's answer Jaden's question here. Then we'll get your top five. He asked, "What do you okay. think of Goaded stuff?" I've never been big on Gibson acoustics, and I don't really care for the really thin body acoustics that Good intends to make. But Gooden has a great sub brand called Seagull Guitars that actually have a full size body. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I used to, I used to know, have a friend that had a, or actually my brother in law had it for a while, a Seagull um, acoustic guitar, and it was a nice guitar. I, I thought it sounded good, and uh, and it and it played good too. It was a What's rosewood up, Mr. Spruce. Yeah, I mean I've had several Seagull guitars. I had over the years. Yeah, they're they're nice. They're and I had a goat in electric guitar, and you know I liked it. I, you know that whole that whole brand, that whole group or family of brands, they they put out pretty decent stuff. So what is your what it what it what is your all thoughts on uh on on uh what is it? Yeah, Jerry. What is your thoughts on uh, what's that company fine. called? Yeah, I paid you a call this morning. That's kind of um, I can't I can't think of that name. Yeah, um, we're not Regal. Uh, it's uh, starts with a B. Blue Ridge. Oh, no. oh, great, great. Another one starts with a B. I can't think of its think of its name. Breedlove. Breedlove. Yeah, yeah. Uh. You know, I've picked some breed loves up off the wall and in, in different yeah. places before oh, that I really like. Um, they're a reasonably worried, priced worried guitar for a solid wooden piece. <laughs> yeah, you think they are? Yeah. A lot of the a lot of their stuff that's solid wood is well below a thousand dollars. Some of them even closer to like five hundred. And you know, it's hard to find a solid wood guitar for that for that kind of money. Yeah, yeah. for sure, definitely. Yeah. So another question yeah, for me, or not, another, you, you not know, really another so, question for me, but uh, you know, another you know, question that, that for uh, Breedlove is a good guitar. Uh, I was worried about you. And then not only Breedlove <laughs> is a, not only Breedlove is a good guitar, is a uh, is a is a decent guitar. Yeah. I mean, I'm not been a huge fan. Blue Ridge is good. You had a Blue Ridge here a while back that was killer. Yeah, that that was a. Uh, that was one of the higher end Blue Ridges. That was a BR 180, which is basically their uh, copy yeah. of a pre war D45 Martin. Know. It was a Rosewood Spruce guitar. You yeah, it was, I mean, it, it was a solid, killer piece. It was a solid piece. Play, like, another solid yeah. piece yeah. is. Uh, and it didn't sit around very long either. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you got rid of it. You, you sold it pretty, pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful guitar. 
People want, I mean, Blue Ridge is, you know, get shine upon. I've never been a Martin fan. I'll tell you now, I like the OM, but I've never been a Martin <laughs> fan. I thought they were overrated and overfactuated and whatnot, to my opinion. And I thought that I've just always been a Gibson guitar fanboy when it comes oh, to electric and acoustic. <laughs> Best sound hole for a guitar yeah. I ever played was one of the original yeah. uh, Atmos guitars in the early. That's come from Bucky Ryan in the 1990s. It was considered Ovation's yeah, yeah. luxury model. Well, you had like the a Toyota and they found out the second time, didn't you? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, right. yeah, the best, uh, the best sound, yeah, was, oh, okay. those are those are great guitars too, Bucky. I mean, I've just always been a Gibson, and since I've been a kid, a buddy of mine, or my family friend of ours, he had a J200, and every time he played that thing, it sounded killer. And I've just always been a fan yeah. since. Not just because I work for the company, but because I've just loved their guitars. And don't get me wrong, I like a good OM. Well, yeah. But just not my cup of tea for Martin. That was my they first, my good, first Jerry. serious well, guitar well, was a Martin OM, and, that. and you're gonna I'm find good. out I. I actually, Brandon knows already, but I actually love Martin guitars, but yeah, I don't only love Martin guitars. I, I my top yeah. Yeah, five I guitars probably is probably a lot different than, than yours, but, uh, something. it's not tell all me your top. Tell me your top five. Um, Go ahead. Now it's your turn. Uh, if I had I mean, to say my top like five guitars, happen. you know, I and they don't have to be that ones that I own, uh, you, you know, if I could pick any guitar, my number one pick would probably be a D45, you know, pre-war yeah, D45. Uh, when you get back home, uh, like that, I may get in touch. But being realistic, like, uh, I love my Martin OM. Else. See, okay. Okay. That was my first guitar. See how my money goes. <laughs> um, I love my Eastman guitar, which is one that I haven't had very long. That is a, uh, it's actually a, a parlor guitar, a single O size slotted headstock 12 fret guitar. Yeah. Um, I had a Larvie that I really liked. Really, really liked it. <laughs> Your Eastman's got a good sound to it. It, yeah. I love it's right now. It's probably I play it more than I do my Martin Eastman. Is you're going to find out how, you know, how much I fell be. in love with that Maybe company. They make current. really, really nice stuff for a for a blue collar price tag. Uh, um, I yeah. love I love yeah. that. And then That's I guess same. I so I've got I've yeah. got my Martin. Okay. I've got. Uh, the uh, Larvie, Martin, the Eastman, the Larvie. Uh, my father-in-law had a J45 copy that Blue Ridge made. Yeah. It was a signature series. Uh, yeah. I really loved it. Um, and I like the J200s. I, I've never owned one, but I'd like to have a Rosewood okay, J200. I'm, I'm glad that's probably good where good I would here. round out my list. Do what? Yeah, Jay, that's, oh, definitely, yeah. A, uh, yeah. that's no, definitely, definitely a very here. good, that's definitely a very good you question. Take, I'll see you totally, You take care. Yeah, I totally, uh -huh. I totally, uh, I, I totally agree. If you can see Jaden's comment, what's the question? Uh, if you can see it, I'll let you read it off camera. If you can, if not, I can't see it. You can look I at can't it later. See. Yeah, I'm straight uh, zoom here. That's fine. That's fine. Well, um, so. Uh, I guess back back to it. Uh, thank you guys for bearing through that little part there with us and uh, and whatnot. So uh, so hopefully back to it now. So so what was your top five again? Uh, I would say my first guitar, my Martin OM. I can't can't knock it off the list just because I've been playing more of something else. But my Martin OM. Uh, my Eastman would probably come in next. Uh, I had a Larrabee that I really liked. Um, and then my father-in-law had a, uh, a J45 <laughs> copy that was a, it was a Blue Ridge Signature Series guitar that was really cool. I loved it. And then my fifth one would probably have to be a J200. I've never had one, but I've always wanted one, one of the Rosewood ones, Sunburst. Yeah, I played a Rosewood one one time. A guy brought it into Gibson, a Rosewood version one, and I mean, I played yeah. the heck out of that thing, and it was killer. And I just fell in love yeah. with it all over again. Um, so, you know, I'm a Martin guy, but I, when I when I've saw one of those in person, every time I've just been kind of enamored by 
by the way they're made and by the the bridge and all that i just and i know they've got huge tone uh, i've just always you know i've just never been around a lot of gibson guitars to be honest with you i mean but yeah I always sure. have, that one's always stood out, that one's always stood out to me so i'm going to give another little demo here of this amp <laughs> I'm partial to Fender Acoustics. First, I've got a Guild 12 string that sounds amazing or incredible. Ovations, Martin Takaminis. Love my Gibson. Love my Gibson J200. They're hard to beat. Yamaha makes a great acoustic. He's not right. There's been some great red label Yamahas that have been some great acoustics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They had a heyday, man, where they made some good stuff. So uh, another, so yeah, that's the uh, that's the amp there. Uh, let me know if you guys want to hear this tone driver pedal, and I'll uh, do a gear demo of it. Let me show you some more sounds this amp has as well. So right now it's on an AC30. So. <laughs> video but it it sounds great man and i know that i know box makes good amps so jay yeah. put in his comment the two biggest acoustics i would argue are martin and taylor i love mark but never really played many taylors the biggest difference between the two is the brand is it the sound the feel why is the fans of those brands almost always hate other brands and really are they really so I, I, i'll talk about this between taylor that's a very good question that is an actual great question so um Honestly, for me, um, they're two different animals. Yeah, I mean, one of the differences with Taylor is Taylor has a bolt-on neck, 
Taylor has a different neck feel and a different way they do their 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 building of the guitars. So two different ways. I mean, honestly, I mean that's 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 you know people think Martin Taylor Gibson. It's all preference. I think the top three biggest guitar companies are Martin Gibson and Taylor, uh, as far as acoustics go. Yeah. And there's nothing yeah. wrong. I mean, I I like Taylor guitars. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm just I played a, a few guy. different You're a Gibson Taylor. Guy. Yeah, I played a few different Taylors that I've loved. I've had Improved Repair. I've had I've had the top of the line Koa Taylor, like the most expensive Taylor model you can buy at the store. That's not like a private side Bob Taylor. I've had that on my workbench before. Played it. Played the crap out of it. You know, several occasions. I've played the actual crap out of it. And I mean, it's a great sound. I played some great. I played some great Gibsons. I played some great Martins. But I mean, it's all about on, what you like. They're both on necks. They're both on necks. Or it's not like just a, a bolt on neck like it sounds. I mean, but they have a proprietary system, you know. That it, it's not like it's a bad, terrible thing. I mean, I, I like Taylor guitars. I'm just partial to a Martin sound. Yeah, for sure. And I'm right there with you when you say partial to the Martin sound. Collins, they have bolt on necks. Yeah, call, yeah. You know, a lot of people have tried to try to take the the Gibson aspect of it here, or the the Taylor aspect, and copy the bolt on neck and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bob Taylor was a pioneer. So was Orville Gibson when he did the mandolins and the banjos, and he started making acoustic guitars. They were they were all pioneers, Martin. I mean, if it wasn't for those companies, though, we really wouldn't be where we are today. Those companies have paved no. the way for other companies and different things. So, Absolutely. Lucky commenting to to uh, to Jake and he put yes, huge difference. Taylors are more angles, as Martins is actually a very basic build for guitars on. So yeah, some Martins are a very basic build. I'll say that. But even even being a very basic build like it is, it's still got skill involved in it. To the build. Yeah. And it's still oh, historical. there's something about that dovetailed neck joint. I mean, that, it's yeah. wood on wood. It's tight. I mean, it, it's... Yeah, it the X-bracing. Reverberate. The, the tone bars, the X-bracing, all that stuff is really something about it. Yeah, for sure. I mean... So we're gonna we're gonna take a small point. We're gonna talk about we're gonna shift gears a little bit for a few minutes here, and, uh, off of gear for a quick second. We're gonna talk about some music. So tell me, tell me, Jonathan, who has been the biggest influence musically in your life? Who? And then I'll go next. Are you? We talking about famous musicians, right? It just your musical influence. It don't have to be anybody. Who influences you musically? Well, I, I've got. You can tell me who's famous, are, non-famous, and I want to hear you, you all know, in the comment section as well. Okay, so so in in real life, let's let's go this route. In real life, my my biggest influences. There's three of them. It's my father-in-law, uh, Richard Poole. He um, he had a guitar laying around when I first uh, started dating my wife. It was an old Alvarez guitar, 12 string with six strings on it. And I started practicing on it, and, and he kind of got me really seriously wanting to play guitar. And then my brother-in-law, uh, he was already jamming, and he really helped me progress. And I've got a friend named Robbie Bodner, who is an, a virtuoso musician, and he uh, he's been a big influence to me. We're still you know still friends. I'm still tight with all those guys. And but now famous people, I'd have to say probably John Prine is is probably one of my biggest. Very good choice. So I'll talk about it from my standpoint here. So one of my biggest influences, and if uh, and. Uh, and if uh, he's if he's watching, well, he wasn't he wasn't an influence, you know. When I was younger, I grew up watching I grew up watching. Uh, he's a distant cousin, but uh, his name's Mike Archer, who plays already. I grew up watching him. He was always one that kind of got me into guitars when I was younger. Uh, if you're watching, hey Mike, and then there's another there's another couple. We'll say local people that got me interested. Uh, really, I had a buddy that played guitar. I always loved watching him. I always loved watching him play the guitar. And probably another big influence is another big influence is you know, all my life would probably be all the 
all the all the all the people that paved the way before me, like famously, that really got me in when I was a kid. This is the story about how I really got into guitar. So not only did I, you know, grow up getting to on occasion see see my see my uh, distant cousin play, which that really got me into guitar. But what really got me into guitar was uh, my auntie got me a TV show, or not TV show, but a was, yeah, I think it was. Somebody got me a Rascal Flat CD for Christmas one year. Thank you, yeah. my aunt got me, and I got that CD. And it was it was a Feels Like Today album. Had Bless the Broken Road, Feels Like Today, all the classics, you know, uh, yeah, all the classics, man. Mayberry, all the classics on it. And that was the first CD I got. And I remember my dad. We lived on we lived on we had just moved uh, our our we just moved to Sanford at the time. Is uh, is we just moved to Sanford, and my dad, he had like a game room with a pool table. I remember going up there one day when my dad was at work, and my mom, she was outside. I remember going up there one night and just putting that disc in, CD in, and listening to it on his on his radio up there. And I sat in a little chair, and I listened to it. I was probably, I was probably seven, maybe that. I don't remember how old I was at the time, but I went and seen it, and at the time that I seen this, I was like, heard it, I just blew my mind away. Like, Joe Don Rooney, the lead guitar player, played a solo on one of the songs, and I just, man, I said, I want to do that. I said, I want to play a solo. I want to feel what I felt the moment I first heard that song, and he took a yeah. lick on that solo. I want to feel that way. And I'll never forget, <laughs> I was setting up, I was set, I just, we had, we had Dish Network at the time, because I remember, and I was upstairs in my room. <laughs> And I normally watch TV downstairs, but I remember watching it upstairs. And I was sitting there in my little room, I had the TV on, and and Rascal Flatts came on, and it was the ACM Awards. And I remember that they, I had it up real loud. I remember Jordan Rooney came out with a guitar solo, had a Les Paul in his hand. Les Paul Sanders in his hand, and he played the crap out of that thing. When I say he played the crap out of that thing, he played the crap out of it, a solo. And then that on, I just love music. And then I remember, like a couple of weeks later, I got to hear Guns N' Roses for the first time, and I fell in love with Slash. Oh yeah. And those were the two yeah, people man. that really, truly got me into guitar. That really got me those influences. Really got me into music. Got me into guitar. Mm-hmm. And I love country music. I love, love, love country music and all types of music. I don't really love country music. I love all different kinds of music. I love rock yeah, I do music. Yeah, too, man. I love blues, pop. I love I love some funk. I love you know. I love rock, hard rock. I love it all. I'm not partial, but I'll never forget you know that uh, that day. So let's uh, so so uh, and also I love I love music like Chris Young. I love stuff like that. I think he's talented. I love Toby Keith. You know, yeah. I love uh, I love the Allman Brothers. Rambling Man is a killer song. What about Christian? What about what about Christian music? What what kind of Christian music do you listen to? All right, so James, before I answer that, James Smith is for the next. For me, the answer to that question changes every month or two. I'm always discovering things I didn't know know about before. When I discover a musician that touches my skull, I spend a good amount of time just diving into that person's music and soaking it in before moving on to the next, which is great. Yeah. So you know, I like some of these. I like some of these new guys that are that are coming out. Like uh, yeah, you know, also, I like. Well, they're not new, like the Avett Brothers. I like those guys, man. I think they're awesome. And then, uh, you know, let's talk about Bucky on here. Let's talk about Crow Haven. They're, uh, they've been around for, for a while here in Danville, and they've been a pretty good influential on the Danville music scene, which is pretty awesome. And in, uh, in Crow Haven, shout out to that cool group. You know, Got to support uh, them local guys, man. Yes, for sure. Especially the talented guys like Bucky and Crow Haven. And Bucky said, Jimmy Page, Carlos Santana, Eric Piper, Albert King, Don Rich, Roy Nichols, his mom and dad never missed the Buck Owens rent show. I met Buck Owens in Bakersville at his pub three weeks before he passed, picking up a load of carrots wow. on Friday morning. Great Friday evening. 
That is great, Bucky. That is great. That's incredible, man. Man, Buck Owens. I love him. I, I want a Buck Owens guitar with the red, white, and blue acoustic. Yeah. I want one of those. Badly. Guy had one for five grand the other day on Facebook. And I said, whoa! Yeah, that guy played that one on uh, that Nirvana Unplugged. Back, yeah, on the, so, back on the MTV, MTV Unplugged, they had he played the Buck Owens guitar. Okay, you talk about MTV Unplugged. Let's go back to, remember when Stevie Ray Vaughan played a 12-string? He played a Gill 12-string. He played uh, he played Pride and Joy on MTV Unplugged. Man, I tell you, I tell you something, Stevie, that, that changed me forever. The first, the first time I ever saw Austin City Limits with Stevie on. I love Stevie. He's one of my biggest influences in the world. Oh, he me is, too, man. He is like, besides BB King and whatnot, he is the king of blues. He he single-handedly. He took blues to, to, a, to a new level, and he still influences blues people today. And he is the most yeah. mem- memorable blues guy there is. Like the, the first time the I blues. saw him, uh, actually saw him playing, uh, I was watching Austin City Limits. Uh, it's like a, a VHS yeah, I mean, set. That oh yeah. my goodness, man, that changed me. I mean, just to see that changed me. T- t- okay, so. Like, when you think of blues, what's the first thing you think of? That he's the first thing I think of. Yeah. I think of him and I think of B.B. King. And the two things I think of when I think of blues is Stevie Ray The Rayvon next thing I think of is B.B. King. Harmonica. <laughs> yeah. I do. I think of some little Ray Stevens harmonica, you know, something like that. But uh, that's, that's who I think of. And, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of great musical influences like Bob Seger, like uh, like uh, Almond Brothers, Ramblin' Man. I love Ramblin' Man. Yeah. I think that is a great song. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, so, so, uh. Tell me, over the years, what is your favorite piece of gear that you've acquired? You may still have or don't. Uh, I probably my Martin OM man. I mean, that's that's it's my thing, man. I mean, I love my ukuleles. You know, I play ukulele have for the last six or seven years, or I don't even know how long now. And I love them, but man, I, there's just a special place for that Martin in my heart. But I don't even play it very much. It's just there's a lot of sentimental value. It was my first first serious guitar. It's what got me going, you know. So it's probably one of my favorite. Now, my favorite to play right now is that Eastman guitar that I have. It's it's my favorite to play right now, bar none. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was hey, over the years, there's been a lot of. There's been a lot of great guitars, notable mentions, and everything like that. But uh, I yeah. love my, my favorite piece of gear I probably ever, ever, ever got rid of is I had I had a I had a Mexican Telecaster that I had at one point, and I had I had stupidly got talked out of it by another guy, and I love that thing. But this little fella, yeah. this little fella in Lexington talked me out of it. And uh, I got rid of it, and so my brother-in-law's a telly guy. I love tellies, man. They sound so good, man. And by the way, thank you guys. Uh, uh, just just to take a second, we appreciate all you guys commenting today, and all you guys are here for your support. This means the world to me. Means the world to Jonathan, I'm sure. And uh, we just Absolutely. to make this a great first episode. You guys have already started to make this awesome. And uh, Bucky says, I saw Stevie and Roll three weeks after he got out of rehab. He was on fire, literally. Albert Collins opened oh, for him. He no, that five, was his best concerts. moments, man. Yes. I mean, I mean, let's talk Let's talk about somebody else here since he's standing right in front of me, Elvis. Elvis is right here hanging on the wall. You've been in my shop. You know about my own oh, yeah. piece. Elvis. I mean, Elvis had some great stuff. Elvis, like... Elvis had some great stuff. You know who Elvis is one of his biggest influences was? B.B. King. Elvis covered really? some B.B. King songs and Chuck Berry songs. There's like, you go look at yeah. it online. And we're talking about I'm Elvis. not super I mean, well versed in Elvis, but 
Um, yeah, but I do but like I mean, a lot of his music. I love, I love Elvis. I think Elvis was influential as well. Oh, I think he absolutely. died too young. Big time. We can get into debate about Elvis all day, but we'll just sum it up here. He was, he was, he was an icon. Yes, when I was. think of Elvis, what's the first thing I think of when I think of Elvis? I think of John Wayne. And you're going to say this because I think of an icon. And I associate Elvis, John Wayne. Those were icons. Those were people that influenced and changed the world. Was John Wayne, yep. was Elvis Presley. I mean, those were the people, in my opinion, that I think influenced the world. I mean, Elvis, you know, he he's left such a mark on music. And there's it's funny, man. There's musicians that, that left uh, huge marks on music, but you know what you're getting into as a luthier. Uh, there's luthiers out Whoa. there that that changed the game as well, and yeah. uh, that ought to make you excited about about uh, going forward with with being a luthier, man. Because uh, you know there's some guys out there that that, that changed it all. It was the greatest decision of my life to do that. Well. I was tickled speechless. I mean, I can honestly say it was one of the greatest decisions of my life. Oh, it had to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was a killer. It was a great decision. So, uh, uh, Bucky says the the taking care of business man was one of the greatest uh, accumulations of musicians ever. I definitely agree there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to argue that. Yeah. I mean, the Silver Bullet Man, they were killer. I mean, we're talking about Bob Seger, the Silver Bullet Man, stuff like that. I mean, there is so many influential stuff out there that just really, really pulls me in. What about that. like the, what about Bruce? You know, he he's pretty, Bruce Springsteen, he's, he's been yeah. pretty influential, man. He's the one that did Born in the USA, right? Yeah, the E Street Born Band. Yeah, man. Born in the USA. He's got hit after hit after hit, man. You're gonna do what now? Play what? an intro to a song, and I want you to see if you can guess it. Woo! This is a I bet one of the these. Uh, I bet one this, of our uh, viewers will probably beat me to this one. I bet. Yes, yeah, Silver Bullet can. Man. Bucky said thank you. Silver Bullet Man is so underappreciated. Bucky, I totally agree. That's why I mentioned it because they are. I think they're a great band, the Silver Bullet Man. They are so underappreciated. So here we go, Jonathan. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. playing this wrong so Jaden if you're still watching uh, I may be playing this wrong but uh come on Jayden. Can hear you fine, man. Absolutely. That was more Good than a feeling. That was Boston more than a feeling. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I'm 
I'm I'm terrible. I'm terrible at that. And I'm probably I'll doing it horribly right wrong. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Take him in here uh, while we're doing this. Take him in, and I'm sure you want to do the same thing. You know, another underappreciated thing is I like to appreciate my mom and dad. They're underappreciated. All they do to help make things like me behind the scenes happen, but just underappreciated. They've been a pretty big influence in my life as well, supporting me through my music career, my Luthier year career and Nashville and whatnot, and just thank you to them. And I'm sure you probably want to say thank you to your mom and dad as well. Man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anywhere without my mom and dad. They've, they've got me where I am today, man. I mean, got to have those parents, man. That, and you got to take care of them too, man. Got to yeah, give them sure. credit where it's due. Yes, for sure. Uh, definitely. And, uh, and, uh, Shout out to my sister as well. I'm the best. I'm the best uh, child. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm not. I'm not even going to cross mine. So <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going to say anything like that. Yeah, you, may, you may. You may. You may say that. You may say that. The next. Next. Next time we do this or Friday come in, I, you yeah. may have two black eyes. Hey, Jonathan, I'll just say, you? if she's here, I love her. You know. Jonathan, you say that you come in next next uh, next stream or next episode. And then, Jonathan, why'd you get two black eyes? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Nah, everybody. Uh, uh, but uh, so uh, this tone driver pedal is cool. You can pick it up as well. And this amp behind me here, I've got a compressor and standard pedal, and I've also got a crybaby pedal, which is pretty pretty sweet. Um, so another another thing that I wanna I wanna point out as well here is uh, so what is what is uh, wh okay you're an acoustic man we're gonna ask you a question here that's gonna be something what do you think the best acoustic amp is best acoustic amp um you know I play I don't know if you can see it back here. But I've got this little Fender Acoustasonic amp over here behind me. I kind of, kind of get it out, and it, I'm just talking about for the money, man. For the money, this little amp right here has been good for me, man. I've I've jammed with it for the last I don't know three or four years. I mean, it's uh, I think small. I gave, it's not too big, not too small, but it gives I gave the job like done. ninety nine or I gave like around a hundred bucks or maybe a little over a hundred bucks for this thing, and it's been good to me. It works every time I turn it on. It's got a really good clear sound. Now I would like to try. There's a LR bags came out with this thing called a a Synapse. I think is what it's called, and it's kind of like a personal PA, like those Bose L1 systems. I'd like to try that. Uh, yeah, or something. I bigger, would definitely. You know. So my Gibson, I've got an LR bag system in it, which I love. Now, in the acoustic output, I put K and K, but I'm just not big on K and K guitar systems. I like, and, man. I've got in in one of my Ukes, I've got the LR bags Uke 5.0 in it, uh, and I love about that it? stuff, man. Yeah, I love bags, man. They make good stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, very. That's why I'd like to try that. I'd like to try that amp or that speaker they've got, the Synapse. I'd like to try that thing. Yeah, for sure. So. But for cheap, for cheap, you can't beat one of these, and I'm sure that I'm sure Brandon can get you one of these somewhere pretty easily. Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah, so they're, they're they're pretty readily available, man. So. Oh, uh, what about the, uh, you want to do the piece on, uh, your, the dulcimers? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Thanks for, that's a good one. So if you can see behind me, can you see it? I can't see behind me. The dulcimers in view on the camera. Yeah, I can tell you, we can tell you a little bit about dulcimers. So uh, I've got two Paul Rice dulcimers here. There's a guy by the name of Paul Rice. He's a luthier. He makes these out of Waynesburg. He is a... Killer banjo player, killer dulcimer player, killer musician all around. But I love, I love Paul. Paul's a Paul's a great man, and uh, he makes some pretty rocking dulcimers. Yeah, absolutely. He's been doing it for a long time, uh, and you know, dulcimers. 
you know, they kind of went off into obscurity for a long time, man. But, but it was an you old wanna, mountain instrument. Yeah. <laughs> Tell a little bit of history about the dulcimer, how it came to be, what's it used for, and all that. You know, the dulcimer, the dulcimer is, is an old, old instrument, man. And the Appalachian dulcimer is what I'm talking about. And uh, for a long time, they kind of just disappeared from the scene. And then there was a man that came along, and I'll show you a picture of him. If you can see that, this this is Homer Led. Yeah, I can see it pretty good. That's Homer okay. Ledford. Yeah, um, he, he's a so Homer. Well, Homer Ledford, he's not with us anymore, but uh, he was an instrument maker and uh, he was a bluegrass musician too, and he made dulcimers and he kind of brought it back to the to the scene, you know, and people started knowing what they were again whenever Homer came around and started making them. He made dulcimers for people like Jeannie Ritchie. I, I don't know if any of you all have heard yeah. of her. She's so, a folk musician. Lucky puts, Lucky puts must admit, I was still, I was still as a musician burning out from the business. My mom and dad bought me a mandolin and it opened up a new world of music for me. Never be afraid to try a different instrument if you have an interest. You could probably learn. That's right. Amen. I've actually got an ex I've actually got an example here. I'll show you real quick before we get off of this subject. This here is actually a uh, this is actually a, a Homer Ledford uh, dulcimer here that uh, I picked up a few years ago. Now, now but, let's uh, let's throw somebody else in the mix here. Let's add a man's name by the name of Mark Eubank. Yeah, uh, yeah. My first, my first dulcimer was a Homer Ledford dulcimer, but my father-in-law brought this piece of wood home from Ohio, and it was a flamed Hawaiian koa. And I had met Mark Eubank. Uh, he's out of um, Eubank, Kentucky, <laughs> strangely. But anyway, he, uh, I met him at a craft show over around Constitution Square, and I saw his dulcimers. I decided I wanted one. I had that piece of wood. I went and I saw Mark. And uh, he is an excellent luthier. Uh, he's actually uh, built at least one acoustic guitar that is awesome. Uh, but mostly he does dulcimers and he goes to these craft shows. But I've also got an example of one of his here, and I'll kind of show it to you also. Alright, so here, here here's the Eubank, uh, and here's kind of the flamed Hawaiian color, you can see it. And I'll tell you what, um, you know, it's it takes a while to get one of these things built, if you want to get one built from a guy like Mark. Uh, he stays busy because he's so good at it, uh, and you, you rarely see dulcimers hanging around for sale, so if you want a dulcimer, you might want to fly on up to Frizzell's and get one of these Paul Rice dulcimers because uh, Brandon's got two of them, and you don't see those hanging on the wall every day. So, uh. Yeah, for sure. So uh, another thing I'm going to mention here. So let's, uh, let's, uh, um, let's, let's talk about uh, – we've, we've, we've had a lot of great material, uh, a lot of great material – so let's talk about uh, let's talk about what do you recommend like what do, what do you think what do what do you recommend like if you were gonna play out acoustically what guitar would you take with you? Uh, you know I'd probably take I'd take my Martin depending on the situation. My Martin I would take if I needed electronics. If it was a situation in a really quiet spot where I could mic up really well, I would probably take my Eastman just because it's rosewood. And when you're playing solo, to me rosewood adds a depth to your to your guitar that really accompanies you better as a solo artist, you know. I I love rosewood, man. My Martin is maple, so Sound. Does the acoustic guitar sound pretty decent? Yes, it does. It actually sounds good, man. Yeah, I'll take it over here and tune it real quick or check the tuning on it. Uh, yeah, it actually sounds. It actually coming through pretty clear, man. Yeah,
and I think it's neat to feature feature like a folk instrument every once in a while. I think I think that's a you want to you, know, you want to pull out your ukulele and uh, we could just do a little little improv thing. You don't have to be nothing special. You know, it's, we're not gonna we're just me and you and you play and I'll try to come up with something. We can try. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't hear uh, on my end when when you're playing. Yeah, I can't hear my ukulele when you're playing guitar on the other end. Did and that's another thing, guys. Finger pick. Go ahead. As go we ahead, progress, go. as we progress with this, we'll get better at this at the sound stuff. Go ahead. I'll just I'll I'll pick up lightly. You can play some blues on ukulele. You can actually play whatever you, you, you know, ukulele is a pretty versatile instrument. It, you know, it's chromatic scale. You could play blues on it. Like, by the way, guys, just for a heads up real quick before we, here in a little bit, I'm going to be doing a cover. Give me one second here. trying to work out all the all the bugs and kinks with this so sorry it's a problem we'll get there we'll get there you know so the first episode we're we're still trying to work and figure some things out and whatnot and uh i don't know if you heard me talking on the phone there did you hear me Perhaps, yeah i heard you yeah okay well, well, well as we get as we progress here we'll figure out a better solution and stuff and uh when the phone rings how to mute it and whatnot on my end but, uh, you know, today, for now, uh, I apologize. So, just figuring uh, it out. Just figuring it out. Yeah, just figuring it out. So, uh, so, so bear with us on those parts. So here in a little bit, I'm going to be doing a cover of uh, Turn the Page, Bob Seger. He's going to accompany me on harmonica, hopefully. I was really hoping for that. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> So, I do uh, want to hear some turn the page though. Yeah, so uh, so you want to hear it now or? I'm good. Whenever you're pre mentally prepared for it, buddy. <laughs> I mean, I'm prepared for whatever. Let's talk about this acoustic here for a little bit and whatnot, and then you can show us your Eastman if you want. You don't have to play it necessarily. Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, Once we get once we get our uh, stuff figured out a little bit better, we'll be able to stream music better from my my location. Yeah, so uh, 
this is a Hummingbird Pro Gibson. And also, I want to apologize for the other phone call earlier. Uh, I figured they might have stepped out. Not only we were recording, but they didn't. So, uh, I apologize for that as well. I figured they would step out, but they didn't. So Can't run a customer out. <laughs> So, let's go into a little detail. This is a killer guitar, so I'm going to go ahead and do some... Tell, the, tell the story on that one. All right, so I was living in Nashville at the time, and I had a buddy who played for a record company out there, one of the big ones, and he they were, they were forcing him to go to California, L.A., to be a studio musician there because they were shorthanded some guys, and they needed the studio musician badly. Okay, cool, great, blah, 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 awesome. So anyway, they needed a studio musician extremely bad out there to replace. So he had to go out there for, for, for about six months to live and whatnot, and uh, then he would come back to Nashville. But he had to go out there for six months, and he had to get rid of his place here because he couldn't keep it while he kept that one down there. And whatnot, they were paying for his place and blah, 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 moving down there. Well, he had this guitar in the back of his closet. They dropped this guitar in studio, RC, wherever he played it. I think he said oh. RCA. They dropped this guitar in studio and broke the headstock on it. Well, they fixed it. His guitar tech, the studio tech, they got a studio tech in some of these studios. He said the studio tech fixed it. The guy that was, the guy that was their guitar tech fixed it in studio, which was great. They never mm. fixed the finish on it. So I had one of my buddies, uh, Mike McGuire, guitar refinishing in Nashville. Mike, uh, uh, I had him fix it, Mickey McGuire, the finish on it. Then I put new frets in and set it up and whatnot. And he gave it to me for a great price. I ain't gonna discuss the price on here, but basically he was he was in a hurry. He bought he needed to get this guitar gone because basically the story rides and how he told it to me is he got this guitar and. He, he already bought his plane ticket, already had his plane ticket and whatnot. He didn't know what to do with it. And with the finish not being fixed on his headstock break, he didn't want to take it to any guitar. He said that none of the guitar places would give him any money. He told me Guitar Center offered him $200 for this guitar. And so I made him a better offer. And he took it. It's a nice guitar, too. So let's hear Turn the Page uh, by Bob Tigger. You want to get your harmonic out and see if it sounds decent? I'll play some of the chords. I think he's having a small technical difficulty here. So I got get, your, get your harmonica. I'm gonna play some of these chords and see if it sounds any good. I got more harmonicas. This is I got uh, two, yeah. three, I got two, three of them right in front of me. Right. That one sounds pretty good. That one sound like it matches to you. Uh, it, 
it, it might end some parts of the song. Go ahead, jam the song, man. I, I'll get in if I can. Right, I think so. it's one of them songs that uh, you might have to have a couple different keys of heart. Hey, thanks, uh, Mr. Strongfield. This is, and uh, Dave, I want to shine a spotlight on him. He is one of the best music producers there is out there. He has produced two songs for me, and uh, he is one of the best in the business. Musician, talented. He's one of my very close friends, songwriter. He is, to me, one of the most talented guys I know. And I'm so appreciative of him. So I just want to take a spotlight to share him. Now I want to do Turn the Page. So uh, give me a little intro for Turn the Page on the harmonica. You know, they got the saxophone. <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know the intros turn the page. <laughs>
hope I did that song justice. <laughs> you rocked it, man. Whew. So uh, there goes my voice for the rest of the day. No, but uh, <laughs> I love Bob Seger. <laughs> Bob Seger has been a huge influence in my life. My dad loves Bob Seger. I grew up listening to Bob Seger. So I really, I really uh, like Bob Seger. So uh, I was happy to be able to do that cover. You out there watching, let me know what you thought about about that. And I can't see you at the moment. There you go. Yeah, so uh, if you're out there watching, let me know what y'all thought about this. And uh, you want to do a little ukulele cover? You were sounding pretty good on that thing earlier. I'm going to save it for next time, man. I want to get my sound right down here before I start jamming. But uh, I promise yeah. I will, though. Yeah, so uh, any last things you want to say? I love to jam. <laughs> so, yeah, you sounded pretty good on the harmonica with me. You have parts on there. It sounded pretty killer. I so what do you man. think? The ukulele, ukulele is a little better than than the guitar with this setup that we got right now. How does that sound? Is that clear? That, is it yeah, clear? that sounds pretty good. Does it? What's that one uh, you were doing earlier? Weren't you doing some Jason Mraz earlier? Oh, yeah, I think it was this one. Just yesterday morning, let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. And I woke up this morning and I broke down this song. I just can't remember who to send it to. days and I thought they'd never end. Lonely times when I could not find a friend. Oh, but I always thought I'd see you again. You looked down upon me, Jesus. Got to help me make this thing. You just got to see me through another day. My body is aching and my time is at hand. And I won't make it any other way. Oh, I've seen. Lonely times 
Talented guys, and Dave Stromfield says he loves James Taylor. Well, I thank you. I do too, man. James Taylor, he's an inspiration, man. So, uh, I think this is gonna be towards the end of the, our very first episode. Anything you yeah. want to say, Jonathan? Man, I just appreciate you having me on here, man. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, do it. and uh, do it we'll again. Be back. We'll be back here Friday at the same time. And uh, we may we may switch it to one day a week. We may keep it two days a week. But we'll be back here Friday. We'll see how it another, goes. We'll be back here Friday for another episode. Me and Jonathan. Uh, the so uh, so it'll be pretty cool. We may be we may be having a snowy episode if the weather comes there like they go, say. Man. So there but hey, go. um, I'm pretty tickled. I'm pretty excited. Hey, uh, Dave Trumpel said, keep it up, guys. Good stuff. Uh, appreciate it. Tell everybody you know, musician, we want to make this the next happening podcast, the next happening live stream thing. We want to make it. I mean, I feel like it's been a success today. You know, we've had yeah. a few moments, but I feel like it's been a success. We'll get we'll get better at it. We'll get better at it every time. And uh, the yeah. more we go along, and, uh, you know, well, it's just muscle memory. And uh, so I've... Uh, I've appreciated everything, and uh, I've uh, I, the Fred job. So, uh, well, yeah, Fred job, this man. Is, this is pretty much this is, it. Uh, this is pretty pretty much it. I am uh, Brazil Guitars owner and uh, Blue Deer Extraordinaire Brandon Edwards. Uh, you can come check out the store at 228 Jane Trail, Danville, Kentucky. I'm located by McDonald's and Walmart up on the hill next to the Melling Center. You can check us out online at brazilguitars.com. Please make sure you like, share us on Instagram, Facebook, all social media platforms you can. And on top of that, I appreciate you guys letting me and Jonathan hang out with you. Uh, so I'm yeah. Brandon Ever signing off. Hey, it's been real, guys. If you need any real estate needs, uh, hit me at Lincoln Realty in Stanford, Kentucky. Uh, you could call me at 606-669-8225. I'll help you out. Y'all have a good day. Yes, sir.